one of those Penn Staters who are seeing action today. One of three for the Eagles. Look at this. Denver now winning. So that puts even more pressure on the Raiders. We're going to be back. Two minutes, eight seconds left to go. Brent, that's what we were just thinking. They have, uh, even though they were tailing everybody in the NFC East except St. Louis, they have certainly won some friends and some followers here today. What a job they've done. Second down now, 11. Cunningham, as Los Angeles using their first time out a while ago, trying to hit quick. That'll stop the clock. And with 2.02, they'll run another play, then go the two-minute warning, and the Raiders are in pretty good shape right here. Yeah, they really are. And that time they moved the pocket again to, to escape all the pressure from the inside. They had a four-man rush that time, tried to get more pressure on the quarterback. But in spite of that, he threw the ball, but he had to throw it before he really wanted to. And it falls incomplete. And the worst thing about it is he stopped the clock. That's exactly right. It's third down. The Raiders now have two timeouts left. They're going to get another stoppage of the clock. They still have three timeouts left. That's what happened. That's right, counting the two-minute warning. Right. Here we go, third down, 11 now for Philadelphia. Pressure coming. Cunningham scrambling out of there. Uh-oh. And he's got his man. It's Tony. And Tony has a first down catch, and they may have slammed the door in the face of the Raiders. Well, 30-yard pickup. I tell you, the scheme, the scheme to mirror... Cunningham has not been effective at all today because they haven't done a very good job of what they said they thought they had to do. They didn't do that this afternoon. That's why they're in trouble, and you have to give Cunningham and the Eagles a lot of credit. Southern California, the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Just moments ago, the Eagles on a third down and 11 come up with a 30-yard pass completion. We've just completed the two-minute warning, and this man, Randall Cunningham, has been nothing short of sensational. Eagles have it at their own 49. I'm Gary Bender along with Hank Stram, as Cunningham will step up almost like a quarterback draw. Now throws it, and it's intercepted. It's picked up by Lester Hayes. question is why throw that football well you talk about you talk about an incredible play look at this he's in the pocket it caves in he takes off and runs throws the ball on the run and the ball is right on the money it's right on the money except this it bobbles out of his hands and uh, Lester Hayes comes up with the interception boy what a great shot great interception and this is where the Raiders this is where they shine. Let's see if they can get it done here in the last minute and 43 seconds. And he pulls even with Willie Brown, the all-time interception leader for the Raiders, the Hall of Famer. Plunk it back on first down over the middle. Todd Christensen's got it. Dropped it to 35. Right, to go back to that play, they don't need to be threading the needle that tight when you're leading and you're trying to kill the remaining time. It isn't the fact that they threw the ball, the fact that they didn't catch it. That was the problem. You can't fall them for the call. They're on the attack. They're trying to keep the ball away from the Raiders. They just dropped the football, and now the Raiders are already getting close to field goal situation. They trail by three. Plunkett throwing again. Barksdale makes the catch. Goes out of bounds. Stops the clock with a minute 11. And this is a situation they love to be in, talking about the Raiders. They say somehow, some way, we're going to win the game. Let's see if this will happen in the waning minutes of this game. Well, you haven't had the great success they've had with not finding ways to win in pressure-packed situations. If they win today, they will ensure their 21st winning year in 22 years. That shows you the kind of organization the Raiders have. Buddy Ryan disappointed he's got to be right now. Second down, a yard to go. And it's not over yet. Look it. Wide right open. No, it's incomplete. Doki Williams could not hang on. Look at this on Roynell Young. Watch this now. He takes him. He's inside to begin with. He gets him turned. And look at him breaking the outside into the corner area. He's wide open. Made a beautiful move. And the ball is too far out in front. He should have still had the ball. Ooh, boy, that would have been a great catch, though, if he yeah. had this one. Yeah, but he had his hands on it. And had he been able to pull it in, it, was a, it would have been a sensational catch. 
but those are the kind of catches they make. Third down in the yard. they got to get that first down now, and they do. And now the Raiders are going to ask for a timeout, and that will leave them with one as they're at the 24. A little excitement here. There's been excitement everywhere. Let's check with it. Here's Brent Busberg. Thank you for catches up to date. Let's catch you up to date here now. 59 seconds left. The Raiders have one timeout remaining. They did get the first down on that last carry. They're at the Philadelphia 24-yard line. 27-24. Philadelphia the lead. New England. Denver winning today. Cleveland winning. The Jets losing. Boy, is it tight. Too close to call. And here we go. First down. fouls over there one-on-one -on, -one on the left side and run a draw play. And Marcus Allen has the football. Makes it to the 17-yard line. They'll have to save that timeout to try to set up the field goal team if they don't get something going here. Hogue and Joyner make the stop. Now they've stopped the clock with 51 seconds. Why is uh, the clock not running? I think, I think the Raiders... Philadelphia called for the timeout, Hank. Boy, that's unbelievable, isn't it? That's just got to be a mistake. That is an absolute mistake. Well, what we have is a second down and about five yards to go. The Raiders have one precious timeout left. The Eagles using their first of the second half. And this man, Chris Barr, who was so excited Saturday after being told he had won the, or had passed the bar to practice law here, right now may have the biggest play of the game coming up. I think they're going to, they got plenty of time to take a couple of shots. One, I would try to get the ball to the guy they don't expect to get it, and that's Todd Christensen. If he can get a one-on-one -on -one situation, it'd be a good chance for a big play to him or Marcus Allen, one of the two. Let's see what they choose to do on these last couple of plays. Not all will be, tent be contingent on what kind of coverage they get. If they get bump and run, they might have tried to do something on top in this short area, but if they don't, they might try to go to the tight end or Marcus Allen one-on-one. -on -one. The Eagles calling that timeout. They're such a young team. They have 15 rookies and first-year players, five of whom are starting. Here we go. Second down. Boy, Todd Christensen got a great situation there if they get the... Looked to me like Marcus Allen might have moved in the backfield. There they go to Allen, and Allen inside the 10, dropped at the 9-yard line. He may have come to a stop, though, before that ball was snapped. Time running down now with 37 seconds. First down, first and goal at the 9. Still think they ought to try to get the ball to Todd Christensen here. They've got a lot of room in that area. Here is Plunkett, just getting rid of it. Stopping it with 23 seconds. Barksdale closest to the football. Well, I tell you right now, the Raiders have a chance, Hank, to go into their second overtime game in as many games. The last time out, it was on a Thursday night. They had to go to overtime against the Chargers. They but got, right now, this guy's thinking a win, not oh, a tie. Yeah, they got plenty of time yet. 23 seconds. Plenty of time down in here. Just inside the nine-yard line. You see the time left and the timeouts remaining. That's Barksdale in motion. Luckett, again, no connection to Barksdale. They're covering uh, Todd Christensen with a linebacker. Gary Cobb was covering on, on the last play, and I'm surprised they don't try to do a little business to him. Well, it comes to a third down. When you're a coach and you got a kicker walking around like that, Hank, do you say anything to him or you just leave him alone? Yeah, you really don't want to disturb him. You really, you know, you just let him, he, he knows what he has to do. He knows the importance of it. You talk to him, you might put too much pressure on him. Here we go. Third down from the eight. Boy, look at Todd Christensen, one-on-one on, one on the outside. No, he's going to keep him in. Plunkett, under some pressure. And he had to get rid of it, and we're going to come to a field goal attempt to try to send this one into overtime.
Chris Barr will come in. Coming into this game, he had hit 17 of 23. This is going to be a 26-yard attempt. get a return. Puts it deep. This is Charles Crawford, the rookie from Oklahoma State, and he's hanging on for dear life. Brings it out to the 20-yard line with four seconds left. It's the history of the franchise. Got to win those close ones, right? You bet. We're four seconds away from overtime. the last gasp effort to try to keep this from going to overtime. And it's broken up. And we're headed to overtime. Okay, I like the way the Eagles have played this game. And it winds up the same way it started. Mike, zip, zip. Call it louder than you did the last time because I won't be able to hear it. But call it in the air. He called the head. And it is a head. Which way you want to kick it. Stand there, please. Over there. Wait a minute. Make up. Get over there, Henry. Philadelphia won the toss and will receive. Okay, we're going to be back to begin the 15-minute overtime as they battle to a 27-point today. They had a game lead on them headed into the afternoon's action. And with only three games left after today, it's uh, not going to give them a lot of catch-up time because they'll not play each other the remaining regular season. The Raiders do have a favorable schedule as opposed to the Broncos the remaining three weeks. But they got to get by this one to get into that position. And here's the guy that just tied it up with a 26-yard field goal, Chris Barr. Second overtime of the year for both these clubs. Crawford will bring it out to the 20. Charles Crawford out to the 25-yard line. To look ahead to the Los Angeles Raiders remaining schedule, they have two of them at home. They go to Seattle, who has really rebounded, as you saw on Thanksgiving Day against Dallas. But then they have Kansas City here and then the winless Colts. Denver, on the other hand, has a more difficult road to hoe, no question about it. They also play Seattle at Seattle. They're at Kansas City, and then you know how Washington's rolling right now. The Redskins on December 13th. At the 24 now, the Eagles in this overtime game will start the series. They're in a double tight offense with double receivers on the outside, hoping for man-for-man -man coverage. There is Tony. He made that big catch. It looked like it was going to slam the door in the Raiders' face, only to later have an interception. And that stop is made after a gain just across the 25-yard line. It'll bring up second down and still seven yards to go. The Raiders express their concern and respect for the way they're playing offensively. Talking about Philadelphia, they played a double zone that time against a formation that normally they would play man for man. Line of scrimmage will be the 26. Second down. Seven yards to go. Here's an opportunity on the left side. He fires has played a lot in this fourth quarter. It bent backwards that time. That's Jerry Robinson, number 57. He didn't uh, play with fires when he was in Philadelphia, but he's played against a lot of these guys, and he bent him backwards, and it'll bring up a third down and five. See, that's a mistake to, in my mind because, you know, if you don't get the first down here, you get to kick the ball away, the game could be over. They had an opportunity for a big play that time. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and they did not take advantage of the opportunity. Hank, I've learned from you, you've got to keep your personality going, and their personality has not been to play it that close to the vest. No, that's right, and especially when you get an opportunity, you've got to take advantage of it, and they didn't on the last play. Now they got it again, and the both outside side were safe. Let's see if they try to go up on top. They're rolling right. Running in, buying some time. Somehow gets out of there, but he's not going to get the first down. 